there and welcome again to my workshop so today we are going to make this 12 millimeter ball screw fit in this top slide now to do that um, there's basically three operations that I have to carry out and the first one is to bore this drilling out here it's probably better if I get it off and show you and uh, we can get it off simply just by undoing these and there you are so what we're talking about uh, because this is much too big for that hole. In actual fact, this is um, 12 millimeter, and that's 12 millimeter. But you know, being cast iron, it, it's just it will go in there, but it's not enough to be able to uh, allow this to operate properly. So I'm going to be boring this out. Okay, so I'm boring that out to probably oh about 14 millimeter which is um, 12.75 is half an inch so I'm going out just a couple of sizes over half an inch um, and then I'm going to be milling this section out here a little wider maybe possibly a little deeper too we're only talking about um, maybe taking a millimeter off each side or just under a sixteenth of an inch off each side um, and off the base as well now um, in addition to that I'm going to be taking the the nut off the screw which is a fairly simple task really, you just uh, machine up a piece of plastic uh, pipe or tubing that's uh, the same size as the the, uh, the bottom of the, the race down in there and you wind this off and you push the tube in as you're winding it off, that way you don't lose any of the balls and because I need to turn this around on this screw and also, I need to machine that side off, this side off, and the bottom. Now, this is um, very, very hard steel. Uh, now, what I normally do is I get a slitting saw, actually, uh, and I, I take it off with, with that, rather than uh, put it in and, and mill it off. Because uh, a milling operation, uh, you know, it would take it would take a, a minimum of three milling operations and uh, providing you don't cook these up because there's nylon pads in here as well so you've got to keep it cool uh, and do a little bit at a time and uh, I think I can grind that off quite successfully and really all I'm interested in keeping is that grease application hole there and drilling and that top securing hole there. That's the only things I'm interested in keeping on that flange. The rest can uh, can go quite happily. Um, because you know the load that this is under is very minimal really when you're talking of a lathe this size. So um, you know you don't have to, it's not under any tremendous strain. And I did the same process with the mini mill, uh, and I will remind people that uh, the I that I converted a Sig X2 to CNC, which is by the side of me here, and um, there are some 12 videos I think that I did about two years ago. So you'll see those on my channel, uh, and I've also put them in a playlist as well which uh, makes it easier for you to find. 
Um, so you might be interested in those as well. And I'd like to, at this point, uh, put a big shout out there to my patrons, um, because without their financial assistance, uh, you know, none of this would be um, possible at this level. So thank you very much, guys. And if you uh, are interested uh, in becoming a patron, please pop along to my patron page. Uh, and again, thank you very much. So to machine this, um, I can't do this in my my little mill there. Um, I've got a large manual uh, mill, which is over the other side of the workshop, and we're going to set this up in there. And also, I saw a few comments a month or so when I I bought my four-inch engineer's vice. And uh, you know, I put it on the, the mini mill and it sort of dwarfed the mill, <laughs> uh, which I knew was going to happen anyway. Uh, but really, I, I bought that because I knew I was going to do this uh, and I knew I was going to require, uh, you know, a larger um, and more precision vice for handling things like this. So we'll go over now to the, the big manual mill and we'll set that up with a vice and set this up in it and start machining. Okay so this is the setup. I've got my four inch engineer's vice on here now and this hole is just a shade over eleven and a half. This hole is a shade over eleven and a half millimeters. Now, so this is an eleven and a half millimeter drill. It slips in there quite comfortably. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the chuck and I'm going to center let's do this up tight so I can center this over and find out the center of that hole Okay, so it's got to come this way. A shade, and it's got to go that way. Make sure it goes all the way through without binding, which it does. So that's perfectly on center now. So I can lock that up. And lock this one up. I've got manual locks under here that I can tighten down on the gib so it stops this moving around. And uh, now I can change this drill out and just bore that mm. hole out. This manual mill, now if you was going to get a manual mill that you really wanted to do, you can do some precision work on this. Uh, get one with a dovetail column, cast square column. Don't get the round tube columns at the back. They will flex. These don't. Um, I've had this for 25 years and um, it's never missed a beat. And I've used this for a lot of jobs. Um, it's got um, a six speed gearbox on it. Um, maximum RPM is 1600 RPM. Slowest RPM is 95. Um, I've toyed with the idea of making it a variable control and that could quite easily be done. Uh, but it's straight gear change at the moment. Uh, it's set at the moment on its slowest speed which is 95 RPM. It's also got forward and reverse motor control and it's a uh, two horsepower motor which is uh, 1500 watts. So that's the slowest speed. Now we're doing cast iron so we want a slow speed 
that's a little bit too sm slow so you change gear just like that you can just catch hold of the shaft and just rock it back and forth and select the gears it's a little bit like a, a truck gearbox I think um, yeah that'll be okay all right so that speed's just about right now um, I've got a, a slow mechanical feed that's a lot of winding work so <laughs> and I don't really need that uh, so I think I can manage quite well with just the uh, manual feed here so um, let's bore this out and I'm actually boring this out to 15 millimeter I've decided I can get Fifteen millimeter, which is uh, and a half an inch, is um, th is uh, twelve point seven five millimeters. So uh, you know it's a shade over uh, half an inch, which would be what nine sixteenths? About nine sixteenths. I can tell you straight away. Uh, inches. Point five nine of an inch. So I, I'm, I, I've noticed on there that uh, a few of you are asking for inches measurement. So <laughs> this is me telling you inches measurements. So what's that? 590,000. I think it's 916ths. 916ths? No, not 916ths. Yeah, it is 916ths. Thereabouts. <laughs> okay, so let's drill this out. went fairly smoothly so what I've done now I've laid it flat down because I've now got to machine the inside out and this is a three-quarter inch um, four flute end mill uh, but now I've got to lower the complete head down uh, to uh, be able to machine this now so that's Okay, for this next operation, I've got a tungsten tip ball mill, which I'm just lining up there 
in the center. I, I'm going to take about two mil a two millimeter trench in the middle out and I'll probably widen it a little. And I want to go about two millimeters deep. Out there. So that's our next operation. See how this one goes. So what I'm going to do now is just take a, a little bit more meat out of this side and a little bit of that side and that'll do me. Okay so we just finished machining this so uh, you can see I've taken a, a trench out of the bottom there. If I can get the light. Take a trench out of the bottom and I've taken 1.5 millimeter out of this side, 1.5 millimeter out of that side and of course I bored that out 15 millimeter which gives me plenty of room for this ball nut and this zero backlash thread. Okay, how to turn that around because there's a million balls in there and we don't want to drop it out all over the floor. So it's quite simply done. Now I've just gone over to my lathe very quickly and just turned a bit of plastic up. There's a millimeter wall. Uh, so the bore is that size. Okay, and the outer diameter is the inner diameter of this track. Simply what you do, hopefully, put it on there like that and you unscrew it and that should, uh, the ball should run up on the outside of this, hopefully, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, very steadily. Very steadily. Oh, it's going through. Sorry, can you see that? Just got to have a little bit of finesse doing this. Because if you get it wrong. So you can see it's climbing now onto the plastic. It's on, in, on the entire plastic now. So now we can pull this off gently like so. Turn the nut around. Put him on that side. Hopefully, there we go. Let's turn around. Just got to re put that dust shield back in. So that's how to turn a ball nut on the race. And hopefully,
Okay, perfect. That's the way we want round. So my next job now is to cut this off. <laughs> That's a joy as well. So you can see it fits in there quite well now. With room to spare. Okay, right. Well, that's fitting in there perfect, actually. Um, but I do have another bit of machining to do on the cross slide. Um, and I've, I've marked out on the cross slide. Uh, then I'm going to be picking that up. Get a bit of light on it. You can see that scribe line. It's in line with these, these drillings here. This is where the old uh, cross slide nut was. Uh, so it's slightly off center. And of course, this is the line where the new ball screw uh, runs. So I've marked out there uh, the center line of the, the ball screw and as far back as I want to machine back. So I've got to take um, about two and a half mil deep, but I'll probably take three uh, just to give me clearance. And what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to see if there's enough room there to pick up that top nut. Sorry, I'm going to see if there's enough room that I can get a thread in there to uh, pick up this top hole. Uh, if not, I'll pick up the two side holes there. The job I'm doing now is I'm actually cutting through the, the ball nut and removing the material that I that I don't want. A couple of tips here because this is you know it's a fairly expensive item, it's a very accurate item. There's nylon parts inside this, so you do not want to cook this up too much and you don't want to damage your your your, your, your screw thread. So I'll put some insulation tape on it. That serves two purposes. It uh, stops the, the, the nut undoing or it stops the threaded rod dropping out through and you loosen your balls all over the place. And uh, it gives you an indicator if things are getting warm too. So what I do is I grind a little bit, dunk it in the water. Okay, grind a bit, dunk it in the water. So it doesn't build up too much heat so you, you gotta hold it by the actual ball nut body carefully it takes a bit of time but you will get there in the end and you know just take your time do it bit by bit don't let much heat get into this and you'll be fine it's in and it works so to all the people who's left 
So to all the people who left comments saying, ah, that ball screw's too big, you'll never get it in there, and you ought to get a, a smaller one, well, it does fit. <laughs> you know, it's gone together without a, without a hitch, really. There's been some fiddly things, but, uh, you know, it's pretty, it's been pretty good. And I've got the 70 millimeter travel that I, that I was looking for. Uh, previous it was 60, so I've increased the travel by um, 10, 10 millimeters. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of making sort of a, uh, a gang tool post. You know, there was two tool posts, one here and one over here. I'll fit that on at a later date. Um, maybe. It seems like a good idea anyway. And, um, you know, everything's pretty straightforward. Nothing sort of really dramatic with it at all. And I think the, the next job that I'm going to do is uh, I'll make the, the um, I've got a housing to make to go on here, which is going to house the thrust washers. Um, the bearing actually fits in here, so I'll get this completed up and to the point where you know I want to put the the standoff on, and I'll, I'll make a common standoff, the same as I did with the the um, the mini mill. Uh, so I'll make those together. So yeah, you know it's going very very well, and I hope you're in, enjoying the videos watching. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. Uh, without their help, you know, I couldn't uh, possibly um, work at this level that I am or maintain it. Uh, so, again, patrons, thank you very much. And I'd like also to thank you viewers for uh, watching my videos. And um, don't forget to press like subscribe to my channel and uh, you know there's over 350 uh, videos now on both my channels so I think we'll we'll leave this one here and uh, the next one then will be finish, finishing off this uh, X axes and then you know putting the standoffs on and you know, if I can get in the same video, we'll build this end up as well. So, uh, thank you for joining me, and it's bye for now.